Hello, you're watching Hornbill TV's Northeast Express. Lately, Nagaland Advisor for Information and Public Relations, Soil and Water Conservation, Imkong L. Imchin, has been having a tussle with the NSCA and IM over the Naga political issue matter and the matter of stakeholders. Yesterday, while giving a press conference, he said, I am fully aware that intellectual and concerned sections, as well as the general public of Nagaland, are also having the same opinion but restraining themselves out of the fear of gun culture prevailing in the state. He said, this is a short clip from the press conference he gave in response to the NSC and IM's reaction. We are demanding that the Naga political issue should, be come to, should come to a reasonable conclusion. As a people's representative since 2003 in the Legislative Assembly, I am also alive and concerned about the opinion expressed by the general Naga public. It is feel imperative on my part to reflect the Naga public opinion in public tumult. I feel nothing wrong for openly expressing their opinion through my mouth. I am fully aware of the intellectual and concerned city sections as well as the general public of Nagaland. Are also having the same opinion, but restraining themselves out of the fear of gun culture prevailing in the state. Yes, I do admit that I have shifted political parties from MPF to NDPP to BGP, owing to the demand of my people, and therefore I feel nothing wrong in it. And now to elaborate a little more and talk a little more on this particular issue, we have joining us our senior news analyst and associate editor, Al Muli, and we'll be speaking more on the Naga political issue and if uh, the Naga political issue is a common issue for all Nagas or is it only restricted to the Naga national political groups. All right, so thank you so much, sir, for joining me on this uh, special newsroom. So we, had, we just heard the statement of uh, our advisor, Im Kong L. Im Chen, in which he has said that a lot of people have, a, have an opinion over the Naga political issue, but restrain themselves due to the gun culture prevailing in the state. So, would, would you agree with uh, his statement? And also, when he speaks about gun culture, and uh, so what do you think that could mean, sir? I, I think definitely most of us, we have come to see a history where we have not really agreed with most of our government representatives, both at the ne negotiation, both at the negotiation table, and also those representing us in the assembly, especially when it comes to the Naga political issue, Akivi. And we all have disagreements with some of our representatives in this regard. And of course, Mr. Im Kong L. Im Chen also, he was the home minister once. And there was a time that people actually questioned some of his policies, especially in regard to the idea of law and order, how the community should be involved, and how the government was not really doing its job in that regard. So. Um, like I say, the, the question of disagreement with our political leaders is one thing, but this is where we all can come to an agreement. Akivay. What Mr. Im Kong L. Im Chen, according to me, is saying is that actually he is being quite politically correct, and that's the coincidence of it, because when he said the people have been restrained for a long time or they have been exercising restraint for a long time to be actually speaking on the political issue. And what he is actually meaning is that there has been a lot of suppression of opinion and views in Naglena Kewe. That is something that we all should know. If you, grew, if you are someone who grew up in the 80s and the 90s, you will know that the underground organizations were the single most, and this is not just my opinion, almost every one of us in the media, the underground organizations, the nationalist platforms have often censured the viewpoints of Naga community leaderships and even opinions. Books were banned. People were exiled or banished by the nationalist organizations. And people who came up with any kind of statements or opinions that was uh, opinion that was contrary to what the nationalist organizations were peddling were censured right there and that. If you would go to the newspaper archives during the past 10 years, 
even as recently as 10 years, you will see the what we the journalists in the in the state call the uncle and nephew conversation. So whenever people criticize the nationalist organizations or their policies, they would immediately issue rejoinders condescending or you know subtly warning them or threatening them or trying to sus suppress their opinion. So uh, I think in this regard, I mean, if, if a solution comes about, it is everyone's, it's not just the NSN IM or the K or the U or the reformist activists. It's not just for the people, it's not only for the government, it's not for only for Nefirio or Muiva, it's for everyone. And I think Im Kong El Im Chen is quite right that this should be a space where everyone should be engaging in constructive conversations to filter out the best if we are going to see something best out of it. Akiva. All right, so now talking about this special Naga political talks, I mean, the talks have been going on uh, in 2015, the historic uh, framework agreement was signed with the NSC and IM. Right. And then the agreed position with the NNPGs later. I mean, uh, so do you think that the involvement of the elected government especially in regard to uh, the Naga political issue. I mean, now there is a committee of a uh, core committee constituted by the government of Nagaland to facilitate as uh, to as facilitators so that the protracted Naga political talks will uh, come to a reasonable end. So do you think that the involvement of the elected government of Nagaland into the Naga political issue is a good sign or do you think that this will only prolong the matter more and more? Uh, either ways, yes and or yes or no, Akivi. Uh, because here, what we are talking about is, uh, we are talking about dialogue between two completely different entities here. And I think even the nationalist organizations have made it clear that, uh, of course, they didn't say, "Hey, don't you, don't come in here. We are the ones in charge. We are the ones talking with the government of India." So don't interfere, no, it's not, not that explicit, but even the government of Nagaland and its committees and the political affairs committees have also faced criticism, especially from the local media in regard to their role in the whole process, because the negotiations are not taking into account a representation uh, from an institution that is directly under the enforcement, administrative enforce, enforcement of the government of India. Okay, so it's practically like having two you know, government of India sides in at the at the negotiation table. So that is why the government itself, the government of Nagaland, Nifirio especially, has historically taken the stance where they are only someone who are supporting and enabling the conversation to continue. Otherwise, uh, they are not really hard and concrete. A contribution from the side of the government of Nagaland because the dialogue, the representation of the people is represented, for instance, in the Naga political groups, and the voice of the government of India is represented in its interlocutors. So, all these two sides they are talking as if they are not from the same place where uh, the political institution decides that they are from the same voice, same political voice. They are two different political voices engaging. So uh, even I think it, uh, uh, opposition parties in the past have criticized the political affairs committees, political affairs, this and that, that the government of Nagaland has formed. And because they have also admitted that they don't have any part in this, in this they don't have any voice in the in the health and the direction that the negotiations take. So uh, I think um, I think that practically answers uh, the reason why people feel that uh, the government uh, government is just putting up committees because it wants to make its presence felt within the negotiation space. So that is why they are creating all these committees. But um, like I said, yes or no, they are not necessarily contributing also, but they are they don't have that much voice also. That's what I mean. But they also cannot just stay away from it without coming up with some kind of a presence. And the political affairs committee is a presence that can represent uh, in the dialogue. Okay, all right. So uh, I think I've meant I've asked you this before, but I'm going to rephrase it. And uh, the thing is, so you've been in the media uh, sector for quite some time now, and like back then, the only 
message that we ever got from the Naga political groups was through the newspapers. Right. And now with the advent of broadcast uh, media and various mediums that have now come out in broadcast, do you think that if the the feeling towards a Naga national political group would become much more better if they actually come out and speak for the Naga cause and tell the Naga public as to how the talks are progressing, what is it that they actually want and also do you think that will create some sort of a, a ease and comfort for us Naga, na the public related to the Naga political issue sir? Yeah, definitely there would be an assurance Akivi, if the Naga, uh, Naga political leaderships came out in the open and engaged with the public, uh, why don't we hold road shows, why don't we have town halls, why don't we have debates, why don't we have public to leadership dialogue forums, why don't we engage in that way, why don't we be transparent about what we are doing with the government of India or what we are doing with the government of Naglen and the progress and the health of the negotiation so far, uh, it will greatly increase the confidence of the public in regard to where their future is going because uh, we have talked about this uh, earlier on to Akive. The first is fire with the government of India and the Naga, Naga Nationalist Group was signed in 1997, in August 1997. It was with the NSN-IM. But you know, the first copy of the ceasefire ground rules that we ever saw was during 2006 and 2007. After almost 10 years, we saw the ceasefire ground rules. And that was the kind of secrecy, I'm not saying secrecy uh, in itself, in its strictest terms, but there have been a separation of information and transparency in regard to how all this have been working out during the more than 80 to 70 rounds of talks between the government of India and the various Naga, Naga political uh, groups. So if they can come out, engage directly with the public, and of course the Hohos represent us, the tribal organizations represent us. So ideally they, re they are our voice, but that's, that's not enough. You have to be a little bit open about what's been going on, especially at a public, public level. And you have to engage the publicity forums and the mechanisms there that are available, TV, newspapers, magazines, and inform the public about what has been going on, what is the progress, and where do we see ourselves in the future, definitely it will increase uh, the confidence of the public in the negotiations and of course instill a greater sense of value in the hopes of the people. Akive. Another uh, concerning matter is also when it comes to the Naga political issue, we've got so many underground organizations. So do you think division is only uh, holding out the talks and do you think that with division and with everyone's demand, that the government of India will actually listen to all the parties. Uh, that's, uh, that's something we cannot think about. We recently had a conversation with one of the leaders of the Naga nationalist groups, Akivi. Yes. And this guy was literally saying, oh no, it's so, so nice. We have got like a lot of nationalist groups coming up, underground factions coming up, which means that we love our country and our land and our people. So it is a good thing that we have lots of NSCN factions. What is wrong with you? These groups, the divisions, the representation that is being given to those who are actually opposed to our goals and aspirations, are actually encouraging the government of Naglen to prolong this. And we, we say in the community, the government, of Nagal, the government of India is actually waiting for you guys to grow old because when new leaders come up, when young leaders come up, they wouldn't know their history. So the government, of Nag, the government of India can easily impose on you the kind of solution they want, not you want. So all these groups coming up also speaks a lot about the lack of transparency among themselves. It speaks a lot about the selfishness amongst the, the power struggle, the need to establish their hold over the community or whatever their interests are. How many do we have, Akeve? 18, 19? Yes. So how many voices do we need to be representing us at the center? So definitely all these divisions are actually happy news for the government, government of India. 
So definitely it's telling them these guys are, uh, they are not united and they are no more a threat to us. That's basically what they are saying, AKV. So it's not good news for the people. All right, sir. And also, I mean, we've got, uh, Nagaland has got a population of about 16 to 17 lakhs, uh, at least latest uh, census. Right. Do you think that these 19 groups actually represent all these 16 lakh people? And also, do you think that if people's involvement in this whole Naga political issue could actually hasten the process so that we can come to a final solution? Uh, the only thing that is loud and clear about mm -hmm. uh, the ceasefire or rather the agreements between the government of India and the Naga national political groups, it, and which is very loud and clear, is the matter of the constitution and the f national flag. Well, when it comes to the matter of national flag, the country India has denied Karnataka from having their Kanada, Kanadiga flag, but they have allowed it to use it for cultural programs. Right. The, I think the only state in India, or rather the only st erstwhile state that actually had permission to have a state flag was Jammu and Kashmir. So do you think that this issue will also be handled like how the government of India handled the Karnataka issue? Uh, definitely, I think that's what the government of uh, India has been doing so far. When the 2015 frame framework agreement was signed, I think one of the uh, one of the highlights that the media gave in regard to where uh, things didn't really fit in was the idea of a separate constitution and a flag. And of course, in 1952, when Jammu and Kashmir was given autonomy, it got its own flag, although it was not a political flag, but it had its own autonomous representation within the framework of the Indian political system, AKV. So it was autonom autonomous in that sense. And you were talking about Canada just now. What we are doing here is, I think, it is a totally different situation in this regard. The novel political issue as recognized by the government of India itself is not uh, something that is uh, ideologically contiguous to the ones that we have in Karnataka or the ones we have in Kashmir. We are seeing us as we are seen as a separate entity, yes. and I think the recognition of the government of India in regard to the Naga political issue as unique, and that is, it's not part of the larger subcontinent's political narrative, unique, entirely different, entirely far put from the political narrative of India itself, itself tell us and itself gives us an idea why the Naga national groups want a separate flag on its own and that should be a political flag. But at the moment I think over the past about 10 to 20 years that we have been going through the media reports, um, the bits and pieces of information that we have been receiving, I do not think that the government of India is willing to give us a political flag. What we might get at best is a cultural flag, but which of course uh, the negotiating groups from the Naglins, from the Naga side will not want that. So um, I think that is exactly the reason why after more than 80 to 70 rounds of talks, they have not progressed beyond the conversation over a separate flag for the Naga people and a separate constitution for a mechanism. If at all a solution is there, that is primarily all, only for the Naga people. So I think that's the reason why the uh, talks are not progressing as much. And if you would solve that particular aspect of a flag and a constitution for the people itself, then I think we can hope for something that is a little different from the kind of narrative that we have been given over the past uh, 50 to 60 years, Akiv. All right, so now in conclusion, I mean, uh, in the press conference that uh, advisor M. Chen had given, he had said that as an elected representative, uh, he, he does not feel wrong in voicing out his opinions. Mm -hmm. So just taking out that statement, so do you think that the 60 legislators of Nagaland should, should also speak up more on this particular issue rather than uh, keeping quiet and also, according to Mr. M. Chen, restraining themselves due to fear of gun culture? Do you think when our elected leaders speak on a, our issue, which is the Naga political issue, there will be more understanding between the Naga political groups and also the elected government? Oh, I think Mr. Im Kong L. Im Chun's statement is representative of the changing times, Akevi. Just recently we were talking about how people were suppressed. Yes. The, media, the, the media were oh, suppressed. 
from expressing anything in relation to the Naga political issues. There was no free, free speech. Newspaper ed editors were attacked. Political leaders were attacked. If you go back to the uh, 70s and 80s, you have seen a lot of assassinations, Naga political leaders. I don't have to tell you that. People were killed, political leaders were killed, police officers were killed, journalists were killed because some sections of the Naga nationalist groups thought that the opinions of these people are detrimental to our stand. So over the about 20 to 30 years, uh, which saw a lot of violence against people who had contrary statements. Uh, I think Mr. Imchen's statement says that times are changing and people are willing to speak up now. And definitely all of us, it's not just the nationalist groups, it's ju not just the government of Nagaland uh, leadership, it's just not the community and the social groups. Even the citizens, they have a right to it because whatever decisions the government of India and the Naga nationalists uh, nationalist groups take whatever solutions come is going to affect each and every one of us all the way into the future so Mr. Im Kong L. Im Chen has a right to say the citizens have the right to say it because it it is their future and definitely I agree with you and I agree with him that he has the right to speak on it because it concerns all of us and our future Akivay. All right, so thank you so much for joining me on this special newsroom and also elaborating on the issue that is currently going on between uh, advisor Im Kong Yal Lim Chin and the NSCNM. Thank you. Thank sir. you for having me, Akivay. So that was our associate editor, Al Muli, and uh, we just spoke about if the Naga political issue is a common issue or is it restricted just to the Naga national political groups. As Sir has rightly pointed out, the times are changing, so maybe the mode of discussion, the mode of uh, the mode of rather discussions, will also be changing, and also the fact that the issue is a common concern for the common Nagas too.